So we come back for Potomac in, in part two of this reunion where Jezebel herself is getting ready for filth out of the magical binder. You know, this is a binder that actually had info in it. Jamal, this is a binder, Mr. Holy Whore, that actually was like right side up. So we know that the information is actually correct. You know, they're not just pulling our legs like you be pulling the people's legs and pulling their panties down to the side down there at the pew. Yeah, this was real shit. So as Giselle was just just getting just getting rid for absolute filth. I loved how she had absolutely nothing to say. Like, I have never heard Jezebel be this damn quiet. I've never heard Gizzard not say nothing from the turkey neck. She had nothing to say. And, of course, Robin had to chime in and give her two cents and ask Monique, why are you doing this? What is the purpose? Why are you doing this? What is the purpose? And I'm glad that Monique ignored them all. But you know what really got me? What really got me throughout all of this is Candace because I was trying to figure out for somebody that's a victim and for somebody that is so damn traumatized, I'm like, she has a lot to say. She apparently is not that scared of Monique because she talks crap about Monique under her breath throughout the whole damn reunion. So I'm like, this is not a traumatized girl. This is not a victim. This is simply a girl that got dragged, that got a wig pulled. And, and as a matter of fact, Candace, had you been able to get up out under that wig, had you not been so focused on holding it down, you actually could have been focused on defending yourself. But apparently you do like getting beat up and you like getting knocked upside your head. Even your damn mammy had to knock you upside your head, Candace. I do got to say this, Candace, and I, I'm, I'm going to get to it. In a, wait, we're going to get to the, we're going to get to it. Let's move right along from that, right? So as Gezebel, <laughs> Gezebel, so as Gezebel is responding to Andy uh, from Monique's allegations, the one thing I got from all of that is that Gezebel has settled and that she's very sad and depressed. The outside don't fool me. The stone cold face don't fool me. What does really tell me the truth is how her daughters respond to her every single time that their dad comes around. They're not happy. He's not around often. All of this stuff is for the show. And, and the one thing that Jezebel wants, she can't get, which is a man to actually stick around and love her and care for her unconditionally, which is why she is jealous of every other woman that has that robin i don't know if you understand or realize this but jezebel is absolutely trying to jezebel her ass all over wine she's too damn happy when she called wine she don't need to be talking about wine uh, talking to wine talking about wine behind your damn back she fixes her hair when she talks to him she's very flirty with him i don't know who wanted to ride him more uh, uh, uh jezebel michael or robin your damn self as a matter of fact you might want to be riding your man 24 7 so that another man or another woman won't have to do it moving right along from that ashley in this whole open relationship with Michael let's just keep it real if I was Ashley I would have to tell Michael to stop playing grab ass because it's making her look crazy out here why does their relationship work let's keep it real they both gay they both gay <laughs> two gay people in a relationship it typically works because they like the same damn thing so it's fine but he is making a fool out of her but Ashley is not no dummy she just keeps a lot of stuff to herself and just much like Ashley has been in survival her whole entire life she's going to remain in survival mode in this damn relationship too so she's going to get a second child and maybe even a third child if she can squeeze it out of him she's going to make sure that she squeeze all she can and all the life out of this man before she move on take half of his money or over half of his money Money, his children and move along to a straight man that's actually gonna love her and the and and the gag is as Kiki would say Ashley is still young enough to move on to another husband and have a whole new family and do it all over again if she just wanted to so Ashley is okay a lot of people think when you don't say nothing and you don't voice everything that's on your mind they think that you're weak and they think that you're dumb and you don't see what's going on but she see oh she her eyes are very open but they both cheat and they both gay which is why this relationship works for now moving right along from that Karen and raise marriage problems to me they ain't really got no problems like that except one thing and i noticed is something that cameron does not want to hear but ray is old he is 20 years older than her that man is tired do y'all remember how long it took him to get up some steps when karen was uh, putting fart bubbles in the tub she was sitting there ray ray Right, man. You know, you were saying this whole damn name. Why? Because that man is old, tired, and woe out. That man wants to be in Florida. Karen, if you want that man to say, I love you again, get that man near sunshine. He needs ocean. He needs sunshine. He needs to, he, he needs to Florida. The old, old people and crazy people belong in Florida. It just, it is what it is. Moving right along from that, T'Challa. How do y'all feel about T'Challa in this season? I could take a lead of damn bird. I didn't think it was that funny. I don't think it really added to a character, but quite frankly, I would rather T'Challa get 
get a peach before Wendy come back and get a peach again. I would I would rather uh, Candace's mother get a peach than I have to hear that damn voice that sound like it got a frog stuck in it, like a, a cat mouse stuck in a tailpipe of a car. I would rather deal with that before Wendy Osefo comes back. And so T'Challa, I can take a leave, but Wendy, get rid of us. So as a matter of fact, if I just got to pick one, let T'Challa get a peach, put him right there in that seat that she was in, and, that, and T'Challa is going to give us more than what Wendy ever did. Moving right along from that, this whole plot against Monique has been going on for a year or two, apparently. Sharice was involved in it. Uh, Monique's ex-friend is involved in it. Candace is involved. Everybody is involved in it. Let me say this when it comes to this plot. Do I abs do I believe that there is a chance that Monique could have been messing around with her trainer or getting a little flirty? Of course there could have been. And I'm going to tell you why. Because one thing that is clear in Monique's and Chris's relationship is that they have a disconnect when it comes to the duties around the house. They have a disconnect even when it comes to the kids. And Chris presents himself on TV. You know, I've been in therapy, so I'm using my words. Presents himself on TV as someone that feels like, look, I write the check, you handle it. But what Monique is saying is like, I understand you write the check, and I understand it's handled, but I would just like if, you know, I just had a little help day-to-day -day around here. I don't want to be barefoot pregnant with 10 kids running around here. I can't be the wife that your mother wants me to be, but I can be the woman that I am, which is a great mother, um, and also an entrepreneur at the same time. And Chris should love that. She ain't trying to blow through all his money. She's trying to help elevate them and help make money. That's what a wife's supposed to do. If you get with a wife and she don't learn and she don't elevate your bank account, that's probably not the woman for you. So with all that being said, is it possible she could have got flirted? Yeah, the girl is married. She ain't dead. Everybody flirt. You can't tell me that Chris don't flirt with nobody. But is it is it freaking believable? That the baby would have been the trainers. I absolutely don't believe that. I believe that was a, a plot to simply take her down. A, a plot to just have something on her. And you got to remember one thing about these friends or these best friends or these ex-best friends. It's one thing for, for you to call somebody your friend. But you really going to see how strong your relationship was with somebody when you ain't got the relationship with them no more. I think that went over your head. I'm going to repeat it again. You see how strong your relationship is with someone when you're not in that relationship anymore. Because if you really love somebody. If you was really true to somebody the way that you say that you are, we best friends, then I'm never going to spill your dirt and your tea just because we don't talk anymore. I'm going to go about my business because that chapter is closed, that season is over. For whatever reason, we didn't fell out. Hey, maybe we come back. Maybe we don't if it's not in our best interest. But you don't blast somebody that you said that you cared about at one point. And so with that being said, that girl was never your friend, Monique. That girl is jealous of you. And quite frankly, I'm willing to bet that there's a lot of people in your camp, Monique, that are jealous of you. You are living a life that people dream of. You got four houses all paid for. You got a husband. You got one baby daddy, one baby father, one husband. You are, you're beautiful. You're thin. You got hazel eyes. You're brown skin. You're a brown, you're perfect example of a brown skin girl. You got your edges you got everything people wish they had and they don't you got things that people aspire to get in a lifetime and they don't have it and then you got that bubbly personality on top of that and so you don't think that people ain't gonna try to do whatever they can to take you down that's what they're gonna do now do i believe candace knew about this plot yes did, did, did jezebel and robin knew about this plot yes everybody was in on it i truly believe that monique was the most hurt by candace and just it just so happened that basically candace just got the biggest mouth out of everybody and she talk her ish and she manifested her own dragon drag me Monique, and she got dragged your wish can be somebody's command sometimes and so that's why i say out here make it very clear about who you are look i get in my white chair i talk my stuff on this camera i'm not a tough guy i ain't purporting myself as no tough guy and i ain't gonna act like no tough guy i bear i use my second amendment rights and i hit the ground and i call the police i don't walk around like no tough guy because somebody gonna call your damn car and candace your car got pulled and your wig got tugged and you did even get dragged that damn hard get over you, you act like you got black eyes and that the girl stomped on your head and dragged you through and through you better be lucky scott didn't get a hold of you you thought you got your ass with by monique that wasn't no true ass whooping your mammy must have never beat your ass because you surely ain't had it anyway moving right along from that the reason why candace and monique really fought in my opinion is because it was a build up on both hands candace did play into the drama by going back and forth with Monique and being condescending. Monique had all the stresses of her marriage and all of her other uh, relationships that were falling apart. And she did take a lot of that out on Candace. We're going to call it what it is. However, the biggest person that played a part in this was Jezebel. It was Gizzard, her damn self. If it wasn't for her push on Monique's shoulder when she was going back and forth with Candace, that fight might not have never happened. If it wasn't for Jezebel sitting there saying, so how are you guys? How are you, Monique and Candace? How are you guys? 
if it wasn't for her intervening, that situation probably would not have happened at night. Jezebel is the instigator in most of these problems on this damn show. And I'm trying to figure out why don't nobody see it. She reminds me of the pretty girl that ain't got no hands that keep holes around her that do got hands. And that person is Robin. I truly believe that if Monique was to go and slap the crap out of Jezebel, that Robin would jump in. And we know that Robin got the strength of a damn man. So why do we think that Jezebel is really up under Robin like that? See, y'all think Robin needs Jezebel. No, Robin don't. Robin's perfectly fine on her own. Jezebel needs Robin. Robin got the mouth. No, I'm sorry. Jezebel got the mouth. Robin is the backup. She's a security. You always keep a security guard around you. I just That's just the vibes I get from them, and that's just what I feel. And so as far as I'm concerned, there are two more people that need to be slapped. That would be Jezebel. Monique need to get her, and she need to go get Sharice, and then their ex-best friend, too. So she got three more butt whoopers to hand out. So if I was her, that's that's the tip I would be on, because Candace is small fish. Why are you trying to fight it? Can, a better match for Candace will be Ashley, even though I think Ashley would tear her apart too. I think T'Challa would tear Candace apart. But I would have if if Candace and Ashley fought, I would be like, okay, that that's that that seems that seems right on par. But Monique and Can ah, easy fish, small fish, all right? And she didn't even get you that good. And let me say this too to Andy. Now, I know you're from St. Louis. And one thing about St. Louis white folks, they are so ingrained with this damn, uh, with, with this segregation damn lifestyle that they just feel that, you know, all black folks is poor. And the only way you come up is, is through sports. And even when you're on sports, that you're going to end up back poor. Monique should have checked your ass, Andy, and let you know that I am not Robin and Juan, all right? My man got plenty of money, plenty of investment we're good over here is he still making that kind of money yes Andy he's still making that kind of money all black folks ain't dumb and running through their money like the, a lot of the ones that be sitting in front of you and sitting closest to you she is not the green eye bandit she is not living in a dilapidated house Andy I know that's what you used to seeing Andy when you are not Andy I know you grew up in Clayton Missouri and you know you you used to you know you only seen uh black folks when you went to those black gay clubs across the river over there in East St. Louis that's what you used to do Andy but I'm here to tell you Andrew that folks black folks around the world is way bigger than what you uh even can conceive now i know you used to writing checks that niggas ain't never seen before but what i'm here to let you know is that monique and her husband been seeing them checks they parlayed that into investments and they're gonna be okay the reason why you were sitting there looking crazy with all that spit grappled up on the side of your damn mouth is the same reason why gizabelle and her gizzard neck been clucking and clicking and clacking and clucking and clicking and clacking and clicking and clacking and clicking since season one because monique is everything that you feel like she shouldn't be but she is and she deserves it all that's that's it. I'm ready for part three. I'm ready for the husbands to come out. We will definitely re be reviewing that as well. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. Make sure you check out my backup channel, Storm Uncut, as well as follow me on all social media platforms. And I will catch you guys later. Embrace Pangea is a black-owned health and wellness brand that has solidified themselves as being able to take care of your yoni. But guess what? They do more than just service your yoni. Yes, as a matter of fact, Embrace Pangea has products to cover you from head to toe, inside and out. And in particular, let me tell you about a couple products that I personally use. Number one is the herbal tooth powder that is better than any toothpaste that you will get over the counter. It will get your teeth clean and help your teeth to maintain a natural white shade. And in addition, to that the advanced botanical mouthwash is something that we all should have in our medicine cabinet now when you look at a bottle like this with 25 potent herbs like echinacea golden cell don't laugh at me if i mispronounced that you know what i meant <laughs> we need these natural ingredients in our mouth rinses so that we can fight tooth decay gingivitis all of that plaque halitosis and overall poor hot oral hygiene okay so if you want to get a good clearance when you go to the dentist get you some embrace pangea and in addition to that make sure you use my code storm to get 10% off your order and check out today